had a bad week. Good evening, my lovelies. I must say, you all look good enough to eat. <laughs> It is I, your lord and vampire savior, Love Game, back with some more Darkstalkers, the Night Warriors, and Vampire Savior. We're playing finally one of my, like, kind of mains. I put that in quotes. So I, don't, I don't really play this game a lot, but. Well, I say this game, I don't play Night Warriors a lot, but in, uh. Vampire Savior, John Talbane, spelled just like my good buddy who I did some, uh. videos with earlier is uh, my second favorite character next to Lilith to actually play as. And he's one of the top tiers, too, so hey. So, who is John Talbain? Well, he's one of those characters who, in the Japanese version, was named Galon, or Garon, which means, like, fierce wolf or something like that. I know, like, Garu, or however you say it, is, like, a word for wolf, because there's actually a fighting game in the Fatal Fury series called Garu, Mark of the Wolves which has, like, uh, Terry Bogard and all those good folks in it. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. But, uh, his name in English is a reference to John Talbot, who, like, him and his son were both in the original Wolfman film, which is obviously what this character is based off of, of course, a werewolf. Again, going back to the Universal-style horror motifs that were the bread and butter of this game's foundation and all that. But who is he? Well, obviously he was originally, well, thought to be a human. He was actually the son of one of the noble... the nobles of the House Makai, who was a full-on, like, just a wolfman who was always a wolfman. He couldn't even transform in a human mother. Although when he was born, he was thought to be human until one night after he was a little older. He transformed into a werewolf, of course. Where else but under the night of a full moon. The classic transformation into this martial artist werewolf. Very inspired by Bruce Lee. In the way that he fights, he uses nunchucks. His special moves are quite fun to use in this game. Again, I'm not as good with him in this as I am in uh, Vampire Savior, but... Funny enough, one of his main moves is very similar to the the up B special that... Fox, Wolf, and Falco all have in the actual Smash games. That one right there. Literally, it happened right as I said it. <laughs> it's called Beast Cannon. It's not called, like, Firefox or anything. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know what Wolf's is even called, because he is one of my mains, but I don't know the names of all of his, uh... I don't know the names of any of his moves, actually. But yeah, of course, he can speak normally despite being a Wolfman, he can still talk. I forget who voices him in the OVA, but... Again, going back to what I mentioned in the Felicia video... I'm feeling way more energetic tonight, by the way. I was like... The last couple of recordings, man, were kind of rough. I'll even admit that myself, but I'm feeling pretty good tonight, and we're playing one of my favorite characters, so how can you go wrong on this? We're getting closer and closer to Halloween. It is now the 27th of October, so there you have it. Whew. Yeah, last night was kind of rough, too. I was um, doing some recordings with John, not John Talbane, but Alombrier, and then... I think I ate some expired food because I wasn't feeling too good. Anyway, so after he transforms into a wolf man, werewolf, he is ostracized from society, unlike Felicia, again, a parallel to Felicia because cats and dogs and all that. But unlike Felicia, who was generally accepted because, I mean, you look at her, she just has, like, cat ears and a tail and, like, I guess kind of claws, but... Most of her body looks like a human being just dressed up as a cat person, so she was more or less accepted in society. John, on the other hand, was always shunned for his monstrous appearance after transforming. Although he can transform back into a human uh, at will, I think. Eventually he can. So he's off on one of his adventures and he meets some old gypsy somewhere in the deep in the forest and she's like, yo. If you get really good, 
I bet you can uh, transform back into a human and lift your curse. So he just, like, dedicates his life to martial arts and improving on himself as much as he possibly can. So he gets a certain peak of power, he can transform back into a human permanently. His fighting style, again, obviously very rushed down. He has no projectiles. Well, he has one that's one of his supers that I show off a couple of times. It's one of my favorite supers, actually. For some reason, I didn't mention this. For some fucking reason, every default palette in Night Warriors is the wrong one. Like, I don't know if y'all have noticed that when I've been playing this game, but... I picked a totally different palette for Morgan that is neither the default nor the correct canon one. It's just kind of one that I thought looked cool. But yeah, for some reason he has the brown fur and the yellow pants here, which kind of makes him uh, look like Banjo. <laughs> Banjo, he was a, a dog. Yeah, this playthrough wasn't quite as hard as uh, the previous characters I've done, just because this guy is like actually one of the characters I know the moves for. He also kind of has that flash kick where you can just kind of do it instantly, you don't really charge it, you just do like a flick up, down. Again, I'm loving the hell out of this fight stick. It just made this playthrough way more, well, possible if I had to say anything. Just fuck you, Huitzel, I hate you so much. What's sad is I won't be able to actually show Huitzel's full story, because his, like, true ending is only in the, uh extended releases of the game, like in the Chaos Tower that I had on PSP. But you know what? Fuck him. He doesn't deserve his own story. I mean, I'll still play as him in this game, but... I fucking hate... Everything about fighting him is like the epitome of cheap arcade bosses. Look at that! Look at that, how fast that grab comes out. That's like frame fucking one or some shit. There's no, like, animation to it. It just happens. If anything, I can't wait to play as him because he's so fucking cheap I can just barrel through most of the, uh, the fights. But yeah, even he's incorrectly colored. He's supposed to be gold. He's based on, like, Aztec. Well, he's actually based on some kind of, uh, Japanese statue that was used for, like, cleansing of the soul or some shit. I'm not very well versed in Japanese folklore. Ugh. But yeah, I'm loving this colder weather. It's so nice. Uh, and other news outside of LP. Because it always gets me in the good mood to just want to do things and create more things like this. Like, after sweating my balls off ever since... Uh, shit, when was I... Ever since, like, March, when I quit going to my job for a while because of, uh, the big sick. Well, I, I had to quit going to my job because they took me off the schedule. <laughs> and then I came back in June, but it's just been, like, sweltering for... Ever since, like, it's been in the hundreds, so... I welcome this colder, even if it's kind of wet outside, I can't fucking get my yard work done, damn it. I got all my hedges trimmed, and then it, this happened, so now my yard was like shit, but... What are you gonna do? Even Pyron is incorrectly colored here, he's fucking blue, he's supposed to be red, or, well, orange. Orange and red. <laughs> Pyron is, like, kind of, if I had to say I had a main in this game, he's kind of my main, he's fun to play. I can play him decently on the, uh, pad, but I can play him even better on the stick, so... There you have it. Even though I can still destroy him, there's that move, by the way. I call it the Flute Dome Special. Because he blows a flute to summon it for some reason. I don't know what that's, like, a reference to, but... It's called Dragon Cannon. Kinda halfway stopped up right now, but... Not really. And there you have John's Darkstalkers 2 or Night Warriors playthrough. Also, there has been some typos. I don't know if y'all have noticed, but being a typical old Japanese translation, it's bound to have one or two. Yeah, he's very expressive. Like He's actually smiling right there. Again, one of the reasons I like playing as him so much is he had so much, like, pop to him. Obviously you can see his human form whenever he wins, but there's a more detailed, uh, spot. Detailed shot. 
Unfortunately, even after transforming back into a human, supposedly lifting his curse, he was still kind of ostracized because they knew who he was since he could transform. They knew he was still John Talvain, so he he was only really a friend to like children. Like I think it's uh, imply he took care of like a uh, took cared took care of orphaned children and what have you. <laughs> Don't really understand that pose right there. I think it's like a reference to Bruce Lee or something. I haven't seen a lot of those old movies in a long ass time. I used to watch a lot of that and like Jackie Chan back in the day, like uh, The Legend of Drunken Master, one of the better movies. IMO. Uh, I can't wait to play as this guy, the worst character in the game. I haven't played as him yet, and that's gonna be true suffering. I always pronounce his name Anacharis, it's Anacharis. Anyway, we're moving on to Vampire Savior. Well, why is he back to his wolf form? That's because he gets back, he uh, has like a thought in the back of his head that he could never truly rid the curse. You know, since it was, since him ridding the curse did not actually solve his problem, well, why waste the time is, uh, as Corn Shack once said. <laughs> yeah, using that nunchuck move is a lot of fun too. But Darkstalkers 3 or Vampire Savior actually had like a full on a more overarching plot. Well, I guess you could say that one and two did as well, but everything in this game leads back to Jetta in some way. And in that same sense for John here. There's the flute doom. Unless he's like turning his nunchucks into a flute or something, but he's clearly putting his mouth on it, so. <laughs> yeah, he, uh. I should go ahead and just say this now, because I was gonna save it for the Jetta run playthrough, whatever, but. I should go ahead and just say it now that, uh. Jetta is luring all the Darkstalkers into, like, this dream realm called the Majigan, which is, like, why certain things are appearing to be kind of off. Kind of like in Blaze Blue Central Fiction, actually. <laughs> this game has so many parallels to Blaze Blue. Uh, so, obviously he goes after Jetta like everybody else does, but... Much like Morgan's playthrough, Jetta is not the final boss for this, because he is aware of a kind of dream-created evil version of him called Dark Talbane, or I guess you could call him Dark Gallon. Uh, you can actually select him through cheat codes. I don't know if he has anything different. I know he's a bitch and a half to fight, but I don't know if he actually has like a major difference between how he plays, if he's like more powerful or anything. I perfected Dimitri, by the way. <laughs> Not in this uh, instance here, but... After him fucking me up three times in a row, I finally just decided I had enough and just uh, went all in on him, because I can actually play this character worth a shit. It's kind of annoying that you can't use the same strategies you can use against like a human player, because like, I'm not doing any crazy combos here that I actually do know some of the combos for... Uh, like him and Lilith, for example. But fighting a CPU is quite different. Although I don't know if not using continues actually detracts from your, or rather gives to your score. But yeah, the reason Jetta's luring everyone here is because there's that giant baby in the background called the Fetus of God, and he's trying to assimilate every single living being into one thing in order to solve the world's problems. Yeah, I'll get more into that when I play as Jetta, but he uses different tactics to lure everyone in based on what their personalities are and what they would desire the most. So there you have it. But yeah, I never understood why... I mean, I get it. Dark Tall Vane basically came from, like, the dreams of the dream world of Majigan, but... I don't understand what he's saying here. Deceit is a crime? Why is he speaking in this, like, 
sophisticated dialect here. I don't understand that at all. Yeah, I don't think he actually has, like, a major difference, but he's, like, flashing and what have you. His palette looks kind of like the, uh, Vampire Savior version, but he doesn't have the yellow pants. I think, I guess he's more of, like, a red or, like, a magenta than a, uh, full-on brown, so... It's not that... It's not, uh, as similar as I was implying that it was that guy. And so John comes to the conclusion that, well, he can never quite escape his curse, but if he can learn to control it, perhaps use it for good and separate the uh, line between man and beast, And again, like I said about him and Felicia, also, there's an H there, there shouldn't be an H there. These kids are named Fred and Marco, by the way. Not sure if this is supposed to take place, like, after that or before, but... I would say before, probably. But yeah, he has a good reason to have opposing views to Felicia, because he's way more monstrous and would be discriminated against more so. Oh boy! I should mention, I suck with heavy characters in fighting games. They're also usually not that good. <laughs> this is Victor von Gerdenheim. I always thought it was Gardenheim. I was mistaken. Well, obviously based on the Frankenstein monster archetype. As everyone knows, Frankenstein was the doctor, not the monster himself. But... He... Again, is kind of one of the two heavy archetype characters alongside uh, Anagoras. Yeah, I suck with him for the most part. I cannot play heavy characters for the life of me, like Iron Tiger. He kind of reminds me a lot of Iron Tiger because he doesn't really have any. He can't uh, run and he can't dash. At least not in this game. So he's kind of a... I guess you could call him like a grappler combined with a traditional heavy. A little bit of a hybrid there. But Victor is interesting. He was created by a scientist of the same name. But unlike the original story, the lightning strike that gave Victor life through artificial means also sadly ended up killing the doctor of Victor, so Victor woke up he was made with like 70 some odd different body parts, so that's why he's so fucking big when he woke up uh, obviously the doctor of Victor was unresponsive and Victor the character, the playable character only had a uh, Kind of a childlike mind? I don't, I don't know if it was like a mind of an actual child, or if it was just that he hadn't been fully developed yet. There I go, fusing with the spirit of the Doctor right there, as you can see. Victor and Victor, one and the same. I do like that little aspect there, that like the spirit of the, the Doctor Victor just uh, can be used in certain attacks. But uh, the way his playstyle works is you can do normal attacks or you can charge the attacks by holding the button down to give it more of an electrified feel slash uh, do more damage. I should mention that a lot of the animations in this game were very heavily inspired by like Hanna-Barbera, like Tom and Jerry and all that. That's why they stretch out and are very constantly animated. Also, fighting Morgan as Victor is the definition of suffering. But thanks to the Doctor, I was able to pull through right there. Anyway, uh, Doctor Victor had created another artificial life form who is kind of the closest thing that Victor has to a sister. Her name is Emily. Uh, she was like this body of a young girl who 
was kind of a prototype to Victor because he couldn't... Or, well, well, Victor could generate electricity. Uh, Emily could not, so she was just kind of like a prototype uh, construct slash reanimated corpse. But Victor, through the nodes on his head right there, can just infinitely generate electricity, which is why he can do all those attacks. But yeah. Very heavily inspired by the Boris Karloff incarnation, which is the most popular uh, Frankenstein. Also get attacked with his butt for some reason, if you notice. I didn't get to do it, but there's like a whole move where he grabs you with his butt and like... It, they turn into like fists. Like the cheeks become fists. I'm not even kidding, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm not very good with him at all. All I can fucking do with him is like jump-ins. <laughs> even though I am... Uh, greatly shortening these videos, I'm not trying to, like, cut everything out, which is why I kept a few more of the longer fights in here, just to show off what the characters can do. You don't know shit about Donovan yet, which I'll save for whenever we actually play as him, but Donovan's cool. But yeah, in the, uh, PSP version, the Chaos Tower, there was, well, a mode called Chaos Tower where you fought, like, a gauntlet of opponents. And one of the things you could fight was, like, powered-up versions of each opponent with, like, a... Uh, kind of, like, unlimited mode in Blaze Blue, actually. And Victor was fucking tough in that. He was not easy. Yeah, even Rakuo here is, like, wrongly colored. Almost everyone is in this game for whatever reason, unless you pick their proper uh, palettes manually, but... You get what I mean. Oh boy, trying to suffer against Sweet Soul. Except that I'm not gonna subject you to that. I hate that full screen laser so fucking much. Everything he does, like, comes out so fast, it's ridiculous. And as usual, Iron is easy as shit. But yeah, as I said before, Victor has a very childlike mind. Almost like Kikuchio from uh, Samurai 7, which I just watched again with uh, Plane Bro recently. So whenever he found Dr. Victor dead, he thought it was like a sign of disapproval because he was just like unresponsive, but... Obviously he just wants to live a carefree life with Emily, but... Well, it's a fighting game. That can't exactly happen. So I think at this point... Because the thing that happens later doesn't happen until the third game, so we'll get to that when it happens, but... Yeah, I, I just generally suck with heavy characters in uh, all these games. <laughs> Although I don't- I also don't like the overly fast, like, super fast ninja flippy kind of characters like Sheik and Smash Bros either. I'm more of, like, which really who I mean, it's like Kagura from Blaze Blue. He's- he is a heavy, but he's also, like, fast. He's just a heavy with a big sword. That attack's quite fun to pull off as well. And he also has that, uh, double lariat move that Zangief has in Street Fighter. And he wants to go back and tell the doctor of his, uh, accomplishments, but obviously far too late for that. Oh yeah, I should mention that too, like, Dr. Victor was very ostracized, like, just like John. Because of the experiments he did, he was very looked down on as, like, a trying-to-play-god kind of person. 
and many rumors were made about him being a drug addict and all sorts of things. There's so much backstory to these characters that are only in, like, uh, comics and whatnot, because it's an arcade game with almost no story to it. There is so much that is lost if you don't, like, go back and read wikis, what have you. But Victor, despite his appearance, is a kind soul. They can fuck you up if you, uh... Look at him the wrong way. <laughs> but yeah... Yeah, like, all these non-playable characters have, like, genuine backstory to them, and it's unfortunate that you can't even, like, experience that normally. So, on to Vampire Savior. Not a whole lot changed, other than the fact that he actually has a dash now. There's the butt through. <laughs> He has a proper dashing move, which is... Which makes him not as insufferable to play in all the way... Or, by the way, there's, uh, Emily. Of course, his, uh, wind quotes are quite fun. <coughs> Sorry about that. Sneeze again. <laughs> He's not quite as insufferable to play as Anacharis is, just because, like, Anacharis has no push block. He doesn't have a lot of good... I mean, he's like, he's interesting, but he didn't have a lot of, like, the best tools that a lot of other characters have, so... Yeah, he's the worst character in the game. <laughs> Obviously, Victor is still quite slow, despite, uh, having a dash. It just makes him a little bit less insufferable to play. I do enjoy the kind of, like, filter on his voice. It's a lot of fun, too. Oh, do you see that, guys? It's a, it's a reference. It's a reference to what he's based off of. You get it? It's clever. But yeah, I also had like a fucking toothache from hell after that. Like, it started off not so bad when I was recording with John, but like... About an hour after that, I was wanting to fucking scream my head off, and I was literally playing... This whole session, I was playing with the toothache, just killing me. Like... I put on, like, two doses of Origel, I took some Tylenol 3s, it sucked. But it's hopefully over for now. It's been a bit of a struggle, but what are you gonna do? Again, with Victor being the only, like, male Keijo player. <laughs> And obviously Jetta playing the typical deal with the devil scenario right here because he's luring in uh, Victor on the pretense that well Emily had kind of a malfunction since she's not well she's kind of artificial and Jetta promising to fix things and Victor is like I ain't having none of your shit because despite being a child like mine you can still see through deceit and what have you. This was also suffering, but I did it. And so, with no other choice... Victor uses the engine that is his own body. If only we had a Katsuki from, uh, Undernight. But yeah, as you can see, not every Darkstalkers character has a happy ending, and Victor is no exception. So Victor, with his final moments, was content in his life.